Good Packer Nation Wednesday morning, guys and dolls. We are halfway there to the weekend. And as of tomorrow, two weeks away from the draft, guys. Jump on, let me know who you are, where you're coming at me from. Who is happy that we are two weeks as of tomorrow away from this year's draft? Packers going to add presumably eight new players, depending on whether we do some trades or not. And I frankly am stoked. I think this draft is playing into our hands in several ways. Uh, some better than others, but this is a Packer team that needs some defense. We've got to retool our defense. We've had some serious exits. And I, hi Tom, says cheese. I have a concern about our linebacker situation. And that's what I want to talk about today. John is here from Bismarck, North Dakota. Good to see you, John. Um, so before we get into all of that, just keep rolling up. We'll do some Packer Nation roll call as we get going. Of course, the news today, big news, guys, huge announcement. The Packers have released McIntyre Dorliant. We just a message out of UNI, undrafted free agent, you know, nice story. We will miss your four games with like one tackle, my friend. Way to blow your chances and you did have a chance. I mean, you were going to be brought back, put you on IR, paid you. McIntyre Dorlean released. It's interesting to me, though. Um, why does Dorlean get released and a guy like Latroy Guyon is still hanging around? That, that's a little bit, it's a little bit sketchy to me. Of course, it comes down to the fact that, you know, I mean, we need cornerbacks too, right? So, uh, but some guys get an extra break. But man, if you're an undrafted free agent, you get a chance with the Green Bay Packers. You gotta, you gotta keep your nose clean. Just stay out of trouble. What is it with these guys? Uh, who's up? Who's in? Who's with me on a Wednesday morning? It is uh, a little bit overcast today. But as of tomorrow, guys, where's the hearts? For we're right. Tomorrow is two weeks from draft day. I can hardly believe it. It's getting so close right now. Uh, Packers getting ready to add some new faces, uh, new talent, hopefully restock the defense, get maybe the cornerback situation uh, in, uh, uh, b in better shape, I guess. Um, and we're looking at, you know, th this has become a matter of conversation because um, there early on in the process, you know, everybody said we had to pick a cornerback first round of the draft. But there are some, the more we look at it, the more we think about it, there are those who think, listen, we committed a first and a second to cornerback. Uh, where do we need to go in this year's draft? It's a deep cornerback draft. Maybe we need to look elsewhere for the first round. So give me a thumbs up right now. I don't know who's in here. I'm not getting any names across the screen right now. But if you are one of those folks that thinks, listen, it's a deep cornerback draft, let's choose maybe a pass rusher in the first round. Give me a thumbs up because I'm starting to move in that direction. And part of it has to do with today's discussion. I'm concerned about our linebacker situation. And we're going to talk about that today. Um, so you can, yeah, it's, you can start out by, you know, who do we have? I think we did ourselves a great service by making sure and locking up Nick Perry before he hit the free agency market. I don't think we would have him if he hit the free agency market. It would have been too rich for Ted Thompson's blood, and I do give him credit for bringing him back. He's, however, a question mark. Um, you know, he's been injured for several years before he got on the field. 2016 had a great year, but he missed two games last year. Um, and he, he did a great job playing with the club, but again, you have this little bit of doubt in your, in the back of your mind as to his availability, not his talent skill level. He's converted to the, he's, he's become a great player at his position. Um, but you don't know if he's going to be able to make it the whole season. And that makes it very difficult to be extremely optimistic. And we basically have very little behind him, no depth to speak of. You move to inside, and we've got, you know, we've committed some draft choices there as well with Jake Ryan, Blake Martinez. But these are folks that you really don't know. They're kind of unknown commodities as well. Ryan had a good year. Uh, we, we, you know, Thomas had his breakout season, got signed back. And you got to figure he's going to be in there quite a bit on, on early downs. But you don't really know. None of those guys is really standing head and shoulders above the rest. None of those guys does it all as an inside linebacker. 
You've got Blake Martinez that you were expecting was going to be able to cover out of the backfield. You've got Jake Ryan, who never really was expected to. But, you know, after a rough year, uh, second year then, he, he grew a little bit. Um, and, uh, and you got Joe Thomas, who really was definitely a fringe player for quite a bit. And he's pretty much a thumper specialist. He's not a guy you want on the field having to cover uh, tight ends out of, the ba- uh, out of the backfield. Tight ends or running backs out of the backfield. So we've got a little bit of a question mark. We've got no stud at the inside yet. And really, on, i got to be honest, nobody that really shows that they're going to become that as far as I'm concerned. And I've said from the beginning, <laughs> I've said since last year, we've got Atlanta Falcon, the Atlanta Falcons back on the schedule. And... If we don't get pressure up the middle, we don't beat the Atlanta Falcons. Now, maybe we pick up, you know, a cornerback, a stud cornerback. Maybe we trade for somebody. Maybe we can still beat the Falcons. But I think the key for me is if we were to pick up that one guy that can get inside pressure, we will beat the Falcons. And until we do, I don't know that I can predict us beating them. My comments are not rolling right now. So I see the comments are supposedly coming through, but I am not reading them right now. So I don't know if there's a glitch or what, but um, you guys keep them rolling and I'm going to keep talking because now you go to the other side uh, of our uh, linebacker position. You got Clay Matthews. I have said, and I think Clay Matthews is going to be fine. Number one, I don't think most people understand what that shoulder injury does to a linebacker in particular. Um, I had great respect for Randall Cobb when he played with a shoulder injury. I don't know how you play through that because I know how they feel. Um, and Clay Matthews, I expect to come back healthy, but again, you still have a Clay Matthews who's had this nagging hamstring injury. It just seems to come up sort of year after year. And these are the kind of injuries that once they show up for multiple years, they don't tend to go away. And you've got, you've got people wanting to trade Clay Matthews right now. I am not one of them. Uh, but you've got people that are ready to go ahead and move on from Clay Matthews. So question mark. Now, the the reason this is a big concern to me is because we're a 3-4 defense. So what we need, we need, a, we need a ton of linebackers. We need a lot of depth at linebacker. Now, we play a lot of nickel. We play a lot of dimes. So we need a lot of depth at cornerback, too. Um, but again, when you look at the way this draft runs, cornerback is deep, pass rusher, or a convertible, a, a defensive end that could convert to outside linebacker. Uh, or an outside linebacker who can get to, to the, the pass rusher, they are fairly thin, okay? So if I could, and I'm not getting any response from anything right now out of Facebook, so um, I know you guys are out there, but I'm starting to change my tune about how we have to go about this draft. And I'm thinking that when we pick at 29, and I wish I could get some thumbs up on this because I know there would be some on either side of this fence, but... I'm starting to believe we need to look very carefully as to one of those sort of, and I think they're going to be rare, um, pass rushing, maybe a a convertible defensive end, or uh, an outside linebacker, and a couple names. I mean, obviously, Tack McKinley is one. I've seen going as high as like eight or nine to maybe the Panthers or the Bengals. But listen, remember early on in the process how many mock drafts had Tack McKinley going to the Packers at 29? A guy who could convert really, really would be a nice pickup. So there are now those who say there's absolutely no way he's available. But look at if you look at how the draft guides, I read several of them. I will, I'll put you on. I think Optimum is a great guide. Um, and I think I got recently appreciate Cheesehead TV sending me one. You can go to Cheesehead TV. Just click the shop button. I think it'll be right at the top. You can get theirs for under nine bucks. Um, but there is such a range uh, on the, in terms of edge rushers or convertible defensive ends that might be there for the Packers, you have a, one, a first or second round grade on a ton of guys right now. If you look through and you go, can go from draft guide to draft guide and you can see guys like Tack McKinley and the range being he could go in the top 10 to he could be a second day pick. A second round pick. Now I am looking at Tack, and I early on, you know, 
it, two weeks ago, I would have said no chance. I don't believe that anymore. I really don't believe that anymore. Um, I think that sort of shoulder issue, the rumblings I am getting are that teams are not nearly as high on McKinley. Well, they're high on him, but they are much more concerned about that shoulder injury than a lot of the people that do these mock drafts are. Um, and it is starting to convince me, I still don't think... I still think it would be a, a, a very big stretch to see him there at 29. Uh, but again, anything can happen. If that run on the cornerback starts early, then I do think there's a possibility he gets pushed. Uh, but I do believe that teams are looking at that shoulder injury with uh, a lot of seriousness. So uh, again, you've got a guy like that, you know, uh, who would be a fantastic addition. We'd make him a, an outside linebacker. And then you've got your TJ Watts. Again, you've got the same thing. When before the combine, nobody thought TJ Watt was a first rounder. Then the combine comes and everybody says he solidified his spot as a mid, for, mid to late first rounder. And all the Packers fans said, there's no way he's going to be available to us. We won't even have a chance. But you look at all, if you look at all the guys who take everything into account and you have him as a possible early second day to a mid-first-round pick. This draft is getting crazy, guys. And at this position in particular, I think it's going to be a wild ride, to be honest. Because one thing I think we can be pretty confident is we're going to be looking at a really good cornerback on the board at 29. And so then your philosophy... Now, the Packers' philosophy is best player available. And... That philosophy then would answer the question for you. And that's, that's why I've often said, because I don't buy it, to be quite honest. Nothing in life is quite that black and white. If that was the case, then once the draft board is set, and we actually wrote a cheese article on this, that, that Ted Thompson outsourced his draft selections to India. Because if your draft selection is set, you can outsource that, pay someone in India, pay a, a digital assistant up in India to just call in your picks for you because all they have to do is go to the truck. Whoever floated to the top of your board, call in the name. There's no, there's no table pounding involved. There's no argument. There's no discussion. You just name the name that floats to the top of your board at that time. And Ted Thompson himself has said that's not always the case. And this is going to be one of those years, guys. So then it's going to move to, we're going to have, I think, at least two, if not three players that are very similar, but have very different skill sets and or very different positions. And I think we're going to have an edge rusher available, and I think we're going to have two cornerbacks or, or, or maybe, a, a, you know, you look at a corner, some of these cornerbacks then show value because a lot of these guys can be kick returners for us. But I am starting to lean toward getting that out, that pass rusher in the first round and letting the second day play itself out. And a lot of people would be against. I'd get angry faces for that. Again, nothing is working on Facebook right now. I will just let you know. It's telling me that people are reacting to the video. So, but I have no idea what you guys are saying. So I apologize. Um, some sort of technical snafu today. But I'm just going to keep flapping. This will be a talking head video then. But this is. But I do have this. I have a major concern because we talked about who we have starting inside linebacker. We don't even really know. And frankly, I'm not super excited about any of them. And I think if I could get super excited about one of them, I would have. It would change my perspective on what this defense could be in 2017. But I'm just not there yet. Um. And we have a 3-4 defense. We need to keep ourselves stocked. We saw how when Clay Matthews went down, we saw Nick Perry go out for a couple games. What happens to this team? Let's, let's do a sort of a, a flip side of a coin. Remember what happened last year at the running back situation? Nick Perry is, has had an injury history. Clay Matthews had, has had an injury history. What if those injuries coincide and we lose both of these guys for two or three weeks like we did James Starks and Eddie Lacy last year. We are up Cuss Creek without a paddle at that point. Now, I have high hopes for Kyler Fackrell. I have high hopes for J. Ron Elliott making the most out of 
getting more right. You got to expect he's going to get a bigger opportunity this time around. But those high hopes are tempered with the reality that we don't know what our starting lineup is going to be able to do for us. There's question marks there. And the second string just looks, it's tumbleweeds to me, guys. And I, mean, I don't want to take anything away from Kyler, but, you know, and I think he, he had one or two sacks. Let's see. He had one and Martinez had two or Martinez had two, I think, and he had one. But to me, it's tumbleweeds. It's a scary situation at the linebacker position for the Green Bay Packers right now. And if there's one position, if, if I had to choose a position on the, on, the, on the team overall that we need to be in sort of desperation mode about, and perhaps even choose a slightly lesser player on our board for position, it wouldn't be cornerback. It would be linebacker. Um, and that's not going to meet with a lot. Of, I mean, there, there will be some people that agree with me. There are going to be a ton of people who are like, listen, you know, our cornerback situation sucks. I don't think, I mean, I think we, are, I think we need work. <laughs> don't get me wrong. But, you know, we've got Randall Rollins and Gunter all coming back. We've got Devon House in-house, pun intended. And we've got a very deep draft. So you put those things together, folks. And I think Packer Nation needs to seriously consider that cornerback is not necessarily our number one priority with that 29 pick. Because, again, once we pick at 29, if we take a cornerback... We're not going to get we're not going to get a linebacker unless we move up. I don't think we're not going to get anybody who's really going to be that fantastic. Nobody that we're going to be super excited about. I think we immediately drop down to, you know, another hopeful, you know, like for a a Blake Martinez type that you know shows some promise. He's got a great motor. He's a leader, but but a, a total question mark. I think the situation is. Not good. I got to be honest. When I seriously take a step back and I look at our cornerback situation and I take all the hate about Gunter, all the hate about Randall and Rollins, and you look at a, you know, you look at three guys who got they got baptism by fire last year and it was it was ugly at times. But you've got those three with that much more experience, what not to do and what they need to do to stay healthy and what they need to do to be successful. You bring in Devon House and you have a deep draft. I'm not saying I'm comfortable with the situation at cornerback. But I am, a, I am at the point where I can very, I think, legitimately say I am less, less Concerned about cornerback than I am about our linebacker situation right now. You know, I think, you know, our defensive line, we brought in Francois, which I thought was a fantastic signing. Okay, so if we move from front, front to back, we brought in Francois. We've got Kenny Clark. A lot of people are high on first round draft choice. He showed some potential, and I think he improved quite a bit. He's got the right attitude, I think. He really sort of comes on. Him and Mike Daniels seem to really work together well. Um... And, uh, and of course, we've got Mike Daniel. Daniel's on the team. So, you know, I think we're fairly set there. Latroy Guyon coming back. Um, and we've got Dean Lowry, who showed some promise. So on our defense, if, I was, if there was one position where I feel like, you know, we don't need to be super, super uh, in pursuit of someone at that position, it's the D-line. Now, the, one of the things that worries me is Ted Thompson's penchant for grabbing big guys in round one, for grabbing these D linemen, even O linemen. Look at the Derek Sherrod signing pick. Um, but, you know, BJ Raji, guys like this, Kenny Clark. This is a team that has often said we can't have enough big guys, but it concerns me if we do that in the first round, number one, because it's the only position on the defense that I feel a little bit comfortable with. But if you go best player available, there is that possibility that Ted Thompson looks at his board and doesn't see a cornerback, doesn't see an outside linebacker or a convertible defensive end, but sees a D lineman. Now, I don't think this draft plays in. I think this draft helps us in that regard. 
But that's a scary thought to me, to be honest. It's almost as scary as us rolling into the, to the, the training camp, which is probably what we're going to do, banked up with 20 some million dollars and we have yet we don't bring in yet another free agent which i think we need at least one more but then moving from front to back then the linebacker situation and you got the cornerback situation and that's where i think the debate's going to take place but i am firmly entrenched in the notion and again i'm talking about how you what is your philosophy right off the bat in this year's draft uh, that the linebacker situation is a major concern for the Green Bay Packers right now. Um, and I don't know how people react to that, uh, but uh, it's, I think it's going to be a major concern here. And so to me, if you, want, you know, if you want sort of a panacea to that, I feel like, and I know some will disagree, but I feel like you know, there's going to be a, one of those guys that we can plug into the linebacking core on the board, and I think we need to take him and come back with our cornerback. And, and early on, I may say, because early on, I probably was one that was saying, listen, let's grab one of these great cornerbacks right off the top. But more and more, the more I look at it, um, I just feel like we'll get a first rounder in the second round. Or if we need to swap out that fifth round, that extra fifth round pick, comp pick, we could even move up a few slots. But here's one of the things I want to add to this, because I don't know if anybody said, and I can't get the comments, so which kind of sucks. I, would, I just want to make a caveat. It sucks not being able to talk to you folks right now. This is weird. And it is like the whole thing has just frozen up. So uh, it's bizarre. But um, at any rate, uh, did anyone see, I won't be able to see your responses, but Vince Beagle was on Wilde and Tausch yesterday. And uh, I listen to it as often as I can. I get, it, get on usually as soon as I get off the show here. And I recommend it highly. Uh, I love those guys. I love having Tausch on there for his insight. Sharp, sharp guy. And Jason Wilde, of course, is great to, to listen to. Uh, but Vince Beagle was on there. And let me tell you, talk about a sharp guy. He sounded like, he, he sounded like, Tau I mean, he sounded like Tauscher to a great extent. Um, and Vince Beagle is a guy that you might want to keep your eye on. And I'm going to have a post about this as soon as I get off of here, because, um, listen, this is a guy, he's not a, you know, he's not a world beater. He's projected between the fourth and the sixth rounds, but think about it, folks. You've got like an, and huge if, okay. What if there were no hypothetical situations? The Packers pick TJ at 29, if, and then they go with maybe, maybe Vince Beagle is still on the board when they get their second pick in round five, or even the first one. Beagle's still on the board, reunites him. I think there's some synergy there, to be quite honest, with his old Badger teammate. And I'm not going to sit here and say he's going to be a world beater in terms of you know, going on the field and, you know, competing for any starting jobs, but he adds some depth and he has a chance to develop. One of the knocks on Vince Beagle is he's considered to be undersized. And, uh, frankly, if you get a guy like that, he's 6'3", you can put weight on his frame, give him a little time. But one of the reasons I really like that scenario is a little bit of depth at linebacker. I mean, holy crap, I, we are just... We need to bring in draft picks. We need to bring in undrafted free agents. We need to be looking at some of our priority free agents to be li the linebacker situation. Uh, but another thing, I mean, I think he brings in some depth. I think there will be some synergy if, if there's a TJ Watt. I mean, Packer fans would be floored. Badger Nation would be absolutely floored because we can hardly get Ted Thompson to pick a Badger, period. And the chances are... I mean, C-3PO would let us know what the, what the odds are on that. Uh, but even if we don't, even if we go, let's say we go cornerback in the first or, or we pick up maybe another linebacker, edge rusher in the first, pick up a cornerback, I think Beagle's a guy to keep your eye on and not to leave. Because, listen, what do you think this kid's going to do for our special teams? In our special teams coverage units, I think, get an immediate bump and to some extent, as a value pick again, we're talking late round, 
As a value pick, the Packers have been willing to commit to guys who can add to special teams. We have had guys with Jarrett Bush and Jeff Janis still on the team who have made their nut in this in on our team as special teams players who can't seem to get on the field, but they are there to sh- for a little bit of depth. And when they get their chance, you know, Jeff Janis, when he had his chances, you know, did a few good things. Well, I see a little bit of a correspondence between a guy like that and a guy like Vince Beagle. And Beagle is a, he is a nonstop motor guy. He is, he is, has pristine character. He's a leader, was a team captain. And um, he sported a great mullet for a while as well. I think he shaved it off. I don't think he has the mullet anymore. But he had a really nice, really cool, old school mullet for a while. You cannot factor out the mullet. So I think what what I'm saying is we need to be very careful that even in late rounds, because in late rounds, we've got other concerns, right? We've got the the guard position on the offense. Uh, If by then we haven't chosen a running back, do we really want to go into training camp with a couple undrafted free agents that we're trying out and Ty Montgomery, Michael, and Aaron Ripkowski? And Don Jackson, I guess, is in there in the mix now, too. I'm not so sure I want to do that. And again, we've done nothing. Again, inverse interest rule perhaps applies to this, but we haven't heard anything about the Packers' interest in any of the free agents or the couple of free agents that are out there. The names are always the same, LeGarrette Blunt and Adrian Peterson. But, you know, we've got other needs that we need to do, but I think we cannot afford to overlook the linebacker situation right now. And I think most of, much of Packer Nation is truly looking right past that to the cornerback situation. And uh, now, you know, as much as I hate to say it, we're coming back full circle. Because what's the big news in Packer Nation as of yesterday? McIntyre Dorlean is gone. Now, to me, I'm like, let, don't let the door hit you in the butt on the way out. I'm not saying that he didn't just basically decide this for himself. I'm not, you know. But what I am saying is that's one last, less guy that knew our system, that apparently the Packers believed in to some extent, because they put him on IR, they were willing to bring him back in, and he's gone as well. Um, but, you know, even with that, I still think, you know, he's not much of a loss. He just, I don't think he was going to pan out. And he proved it. But this is a, it's an exciting time because uh, this is going to be a crazy draft. I mean, this is just going to be craziness. And we haven't talked about draft order for a while, too, and maybe from that mid-round, because, again, um, again, if you have, you know, starting at 20, well, 21 there, we've got the Detroit Lions. The tr- Detroit Lions, you know, they are going to have an eye for pulling some up, somebody off the board that we might be interested in. The Giants, they're at 23. They're picking at 23, which uh, this is a Giants team that went to the playoffs. Uh, some people thought they were going to come back to Lambeau as they had done in the past and beat the Packers at Lambeau in the playoffs. Uh, the Raiders, a good team. Texans, a fantastic defense. Playoff team at 25. Seahawks, Chiefs, Cowboys before the Packers. I think that run from, it's the Broncos at 20 to the Cowboys at 28. I think, we're, I think that is going to be the part of the draft, the first round in particular of this year's draft, where we just watch and we just somewhat cringe at that point. I think that's going to be really the, the dark zone for us because up to that point, you know great players are coming off. Uh, a lot of the players, you know, once you get into that, those playoff teams, that's when you see teams that are really the number one with the Detroit Lions. We're going to be seeing them twice a year at least and may meet them in the playoffs. Um, the uh, Seahawks we'll see once and possibly meet in the playoffs. Cowboys, we know we have to play them and then meet them in the, in the playoffs. And then, you know, with the Steelers, Falcons, Saints, yes, um, but we, we pick before them. So I think this is getting interesting. Uh, with nobody, uh, no av- availability to interact with you guys right now, I'm going to close it up. It's half hour is gone anyway. And uh, I hope you have a great weekend. I appreciate you watching. 
A uh, little bit of a short show today, but that's okay. We'll see if we can figure out what is going on with the uh, comment stream. Uh, I know Facebook has made some changes, and uh, um, so one of them is we can do audio live now, which means what I want to do with that, and I probably will, I will start a podcast in which we go deeper into the numbers. Because what you, if you watch the show a lot, and, and probably folks are sort of tailing off because I can't see anything at this point, but stay with me. Um, Anytime I like to watch the comments because I want to respond to the comments and I want to uh, give shout outs. But that means I can't look at the stats. I can't go quite as deep into what we're talking about. On an audio alone, what I'll be able to do then is truly break down players, um, give their past stats, projections, um, their combine results. Their, you know, There's a lot of things we can do when I can just sit and break down the numbers, stare at my paper, and you guys just listen and get a, you can get a much fuller picture, especially of some of these guys that we're looking at maybe drafting. So that's important uh, for the future. Um, another thing I do want to mention... Um, Get on the Firefan game. I want to see you guys. Um, Firefan is going to have Major League Baseball by the time NBA ba- basketball is done, which is truly exciting. We will we will be playing uh, Brewers baseball. Baseball I love to listen to while I'm tooling around the kitchen or down in the shop. And uh, we're going to be playing Firefan, and it's perfect for that. Lots of exciting stuff. So get on the Facebook page. Hit the Use App button. Fill out the information. They just need your email, your uh, phone number, so that they can... Uh, interact with your phone i guess and then you go download it and right now you can get all your tokens for free you can build up you can build up all the tokens you need for next year's packer nation league it's going to be a big big league it's going to be competitive but you can basically play it for free and there are big changes coming to the nfl fire fan game it's going to be different next year i'll let you know as those uh, details come out folks i appreciate you watching i'll let you go for today a little half hour show yesterday we went an hour so maybe this is a good uh yesterday was a double show so today i'll keep it uh to where it's supposed to be hopefully tomorrow i will be able to see you all uh, i do appreciate you watching i hope you have a good day tomorrow will be thursday two weeks to the draft you all have a good day today Talk to you later. Same pack time tomorrow. Same pack place. Go pack.